Hi guys, welcome. Today we'll be building this nice looking currency converter using Flat, which is powered by Flutter to design UI. You can pick different currencies and convert the amount you want to get the latest prices. Let's get started. Let's first install Flat using pip and also Forex Python to convert currencies. Import Flat as FT from forexpython.converter import currency rates and currency codes. We create a function named main that has page parameter as a type of ft.page. Page is our root window. Now we can change the height and width of the page and call page.update to apply the changes. To run the app, we call ft.app and pass main function to its target attribute. But instead of Python, we run the script with flat to utilize its hot reload feature. So if we change something, changes get applied after saving the script and we don't need to close or run the app every time we manipulate it. For this app, I want 300 pixels of height and 1000 for width. Let's create a class named app which derives from ft.userControl. I'm going to return a control or widget in its build method. That's how we create a custom widget in Flat. It should derive from user control and return whatever widget we want in the build method. Now in the main method we create an instance of app class and add it to the page. When we use add method we don't need to call update anymore. In build method let's create a text field which its label attribute is equal to amount and store it in soft.amount.tf. Then a dropdown which its label is equal to from and its first option is usd space dash space united states dollar. Then we copy it and change the label to 2 and the name to self.2db. The options of a dropdown should be an instance of ft.dropdown.option. So we get the user input with self.amount.tf, then the user can choose currencies to convert using from and to dropdowns. For now we only have us dollar and we add the rest very soon. Let's create a self.result call, which is a column to show the result with alignment of center and spacing of 0. Spacing is the space between members of the column that I want it to be 0. Then we return a column, which is alignment and horizontal alignment is center, which means center in all directions. This controls our first arrow which contains self.amount.tf from dp and to dp that we created. And second, the result column. Let's see what we've created so far. Well, I want them to be evenly spaced, so let's do it. Nice, that looks good to me. Let's create add currency method to add all the currencies to our dropdowns. But before that, we need to create instances of currency rates and currency codes in the constructor to keep the code cleaner. So we call the constructor and of course the superclasses constructor should be always called in a custom widget. Then I create self.cr for currency rates and self.cc for currency codes. You can change the names to avoid confusion. Then in add currency method we call self.cr.getRates and pass usd to it. Then we store it in all currencies variable. Let's print it out. But before that we should call the function in build method so it gets executed when we hot reload the app. As you see self.cr.getRates gives all the currency prices compared to the currency that we pass to it in a dictionary. I use this to get the currency codes not prices, I don't care about the rates. For I in list of all currencies.keys. This gives us all the keys of the dictionary which are all currency codes and converts it to a list. Print I. Let's see what I is. Great, we now have all the currency codes and can fill the drop downs out. So we tap into self.fromdp.options which is a list and append to it a ft.dropdown.option. It's a string, so first we want I which is the currency code plus space dash space plus self.cc.getCurrency name and we pass I to it. Get currency name gives the full name of the code that we pass to it. Let's copy this and change the name to self.2dp so we fill both drop downs. As you see, we have all the available currencies with their codes and their full names. I want the user to enter a value and select two currencies from the dropdowns, and when a button that we will create very soon is pressed, we convert the value of currency from this dropdown, which is from dropdown, to this one, which is to dropdown. Now all we need is converting the currencies and show the result to the user. For that, let's create convert click method and pass e to it, which is an event handler, and should be there, but we don't need to use it necessarily. And pass the function for now. Then we go to column that we return in the build method and before the result column we put a text button which says convert and its unclick attribute is set to convert clicked. So when we click the convert button, convert click method gets executed. We call self.cr.convert method. Its first attribute is the base currency code which we get from self.fromdp.value in the brackets column tree. This gives us the first three indexes of the string which always is the currency code. 
The second attribute is destination currency code, which we get it from two dropdown. And the last attribute is the amount that we want to convert, which is the value of self.amountif, but we need to convert it to float as it says string. Let's print the result. Let's convert one US dollar to euro by pressing convert button. As you see, we have a lot of decimal numbers. Let's reduce it to three. Rounded result is equal to round. First attribute is the result, and second is the number of decimals that you want. I want three. Let's print it out. It's better. Now we can show the result to the user. We need to call self.cc.getSymbol and pass the currency code, which is the first three indexes of dropdown's values, the same as we did to get the result. Then we get the names from the dropdown values, which are from index 6 to the end of the string. Now we create result text at text widget, which is a if string. First we put two symbol, rounded result, space, two name, and set its size to 35, cause I want it to catch user's eyes. And its color is black. Then we check if the float of the value that user entered is greater than the result. If so, we change the color of the result to green. That means the destination currency has more value than the base currency. Well, if they have the same value, the color stays black, and else color is red, which means the destination currency has less value than the base currency. Finally, we clear the result column controls by calling clear method. Then we extend its controls. Controls is a list, so we can append items to it. But if you want to add multiple items, we use extend. So you extend it by a list which its first item is aft.text, which is a if string. We want from symbol, the value of amount tf, space, from name, and second item is result text. And finally, we call self.update to apply the changes that we've made. Let's test it. Great, we first have the currency symbol, then the amount followed by the name of the currency. But we need an equal sign at the end of the first sentence. And now it's perfect. The currency symbol actually is the same as the name of the currency and they don't come together normally. But I wanted to show you how we can get the symbol and after all it's our app and we can do whatever we want. The UI is cool, color changing of the result makes it easier to read and it looks professional. If you like Flood Framework and want to make more apps in Flood, watch these videos. That's it guys, please like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more cool stuff. Take care, see you later.